hello, my name is Kennedy Lipscomb, and my mentor is Dr. Moretti and Dr. Leopold, and my host institution is Alabama a and and the University of Alabama in Huntsville. Um, today, I'm presenting the low temperature plasma, which improves seed germination and suppresses growth of the spinach seed borne pathogen. So this is the outline. We're going to describe plasma and its and its importance. We're going to overall talk about the objective of the experiment. We're going to discuss the fungal strain that was being used. And we're going to describe the procedures. And we're going to show the end results and the data that we collected. Uh, we're going to discuss the continuation of the experiment. And we're going to, of course, give acknowledgement and cited sources. First things first, we must discuss what plasma is. Plasma is predominantly, is a unique material treatment technique. Um, plasma overall is a matter that is made up of um, electrical neutral, neutral atoms, ionized particles and molecules. LTP can only access the surface of certain, of certain substance and um, basically where plasma is found is predominantly in the universe, in the world that we're living in today. We can find it in the sun, stars, lightning, and we can even create it in our microwaves. And it's also portrayed on television screens and et cetera. Low temperature plasma and its importance. Cold plasma is used to increase food production and quality. It keeps our crops and livestock alive and it keeps different crops to not be infected. LTP treatment causes fungal act inactivity, regulates food safety, and regulates microbes. Cold plasma treatments is a modern eco-architectural technology. LTP comes in different form tools, such as jets, chambers, and sheets. It increases the growth of plants and seeds, of course and things in that nature. And this is the picture. We have distilled water that's being treated with the cold plasma. And we also have the turmeric root that's being treated with the plasma as well. And this is me treating the, the turmeric root. And this is me talking to Dr. Moretti. And this is my other intern that I was working with. Her name is Terica. So we're gonna get to the, the the big thing. <laughs> so the main objective is to determine the mode of action of low, of low temperature plasma, plasma activated water for seed germination and to suppress the growth of seed foreign pathogens. We use the strain 005, 406, 416, 428 of Stemphalum botrysum. Um, we might have to stop the rest so I can repeat that, but um, it's um, we use the strain 005, 406, 416, and 428 of Stemphilium botrysum. And common questions we ask ourselves is how can bacteria or fungi be controlled through using plasma? If LTP can stimulate the growth in seeds, can plants, can it be used to suppress infections in plants? Can LTP penetrate the different strands of fungi or bacteria? What happens to the bacteria or fungi functions when cold plasma reaches the surface of the bacteria or fungi? And this is um, one of the strains that we're going to be using. Um, this is the Stymphalum bitricium. Um, this is a plant fungal species that invades dying plant tissues. We had to observe this, this, fun this fungus um, so and collect information regarding the different growth colonies and what tools to use to count these cells. We have to obtain these information so we can further gather more information so we can further our, ex our experiment. Um, we have the condemnia and the mycelia and the, the hemo hemocytometer. The condemnia is basically a, a strand of fungi that um, grows you can imagine it as a cloud, <laughs> grows like a cloud. Right here is uh, how a condylia or a condylium is seen under a microscope. And this is the mycelia, it grows white, white thread 
like um, material. You can think of it like small little dust mites that's like thin and white. Um, it grows from, um, these are all plant infections. And this is how that one looks. And this is how the, um, the samples that we took um, in the, in the pin, placed in the Petri dish. And this is how certain things was looking. Okay. This is the article that we have researched. And this is talking about the results when it's, um, when it's talking about the resistance factor that the plasma plays. Um, these are the procedures we took. We autoclaved the media, the filter paper, distilled water, and we had to cool the media, pour it into the Petri dish, lay the filter paper in the, in the center, and perform all procedures under the hood so we can avoid contamination. That was like the most important part that I took from is being very particular on how you perform certain tags so we can avoid contamination because we're dealing with fun with fungus and dealing with fungus it's they're very sensitive so anything the air it could contaminate anything and you sitting over it and your hands are not clean can contaminate it so it was one of those rule of thumbs that we had to follow and this is me pouring some media taking out the petri dishes and things like that um, Okay, and these are the treatments. We treated each strand for, we had a control group and then we treated each strand for 30 seconds, 60 seconds and 90 seconds. Um, we had two groups and we basically treated it under the plasma. And these are their little results on the first day, seeing how it is. And this is part one of the method that we went ahead and did because we noticed that a lot, it was a lot of contaminations when it came to placing the small strain on top of the filter paper. We, could, we noticed it was a lot of contamination. So we kind of switched some stuff up. We actually grew the, the fungi on the V8 argon medium. We cut and then we waited until it grew. We cut the small pieces and we exposed it to different variations of plasma in at UH. Um, this kind of helped with the contaminations. Um, we transferred the treated and non-treated samples on fresh V8 media overlaid with the filter paper and disc. Um, each treatment duration was um, replicated around four times. Um, we collected data and we measured the diameter of the mycelial growth in centimeters. And this is us cutting the grown um, fungal in small pieces and we have to um, treat it with plasma each piece for the duration of 30 seconds, 60 seconds, and 90 seconds. And this is the results, basically. This is the results we collected. We do have measurements, but again, we don't have the specific tool to count each cell particle within the Petri dish, but so, but we measured it, you know, using a ruler with a naked eye. So that's kind of, you know, that was a little challenge, but we basically um, saw the growth. We saw how the control factors grew a little bit faster. We saw a difference. We did see a difference. Um, and we saw how the control factors um, had a, a larger, a larger, um, a larger centimeters over the strains that were treated with plasma. And these are more results that we collected. A lot, it was a couple that was contaminated and we had to see if that was because of the voltage, it was because, you know, humans, it's, you know, it's always the error of percentage. And 
for discussion. Um, each, strand, each strain of the Stemphilium bitracium has a slightly different growth reaction from the plasmas treatment. Moving forward with this experiment, we're going to continue testing the fungal suppressions, growth from plasma treatments. The condemnia production will be quantified and accessible for morph morphological ch changes and treated versus the controlled treat treatment using the scanning electron microscope. Um, plasma treated isolates of the stemphilium will then be applied to will then be applied to the germinated seeds to analyze the effects of germination growth as well as the overall plant health. And I would like to give acknowledgement. I would like to acknowledge and thank my mentors, Dr. Miretti, Dr. Leopold, Mr. Lamb, and Ms. Sophia Madison, and every faculty member for the <laughs> in the biological and environmental health science at Alabama a and University for guiding and supervising this experiment. I would also like to show appreciation to Dr. Sieber and the faculty and staff of the Wentford Thomas Agricultural Research Station for their services and guidance during this program as well. We will also like to thank the NSF um, Alpip program for allowing this in internship to take place in such unpredictable times. And these are my cited sources. And if you have any questions, we can, you know, talk about it. But that will be all that I have to share. Thank you again. Hi, my name is Flazzy, and thank you for watching this video. Make sure to follow us on our social media at CPHUL on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Bye!